and welcome. Join us today as we take a look at wind vane self-steering systems. We'll be discussing the principles of these systems and how they work. To avoid revealing any trade secrets, the mechanics of our models are simplified and very basic. They do not represent any particular makes or models, and this is not an instructional video on how to make one. Once again, we'd like to give a shout out to all our followers who have left such positive comments. And remember to like, comment, share and subscribe. Today we'll be looking at three different types of wind vane self-steering systems. The first will be the auxiliary rudder system where the system uses its own rudder to correct steering. The next system is known as a servo pendulum system. And this one attaches to and controls the main steering of the vessel by controlling the wheel or the tiller. And the last one we will look at is also a servo pendulum system, but this time the system will alter steering by controlling the vessel's rudder. They generally all work on the same principles, so let's go back and check our auxiliary rudder system. This system will be attached to the transom or the back of the vessel. Our wind vane is the part that will be affected by the wind. It is attached on a swivel and has a lead counterweight which holds it in an upright position. When the wind vane faces directly into the wind, it stands up straight and will do the same when there is no wind at all. As the vane flips over from side to side, various mechanics cause a rotating movement which turns the rudder. The rudder then controls the steering of the vessel. As the vane flips over, the rudder rotates and the boat is steered. If the vane stays upright and facing directly into the wind, the rudder steers straight. To set the vane so it faces into the wind, we need to use a direction controller. As we adjust the controller, we can change the direction of the vane so that it faces the wind no matter what course we are sailing on. To ensure safety, this controller should be adjustable from the cockpit. Once we are underway, we use this to turn the vane so it faces into the wind. Here our vessel is sailing on a port beam reach and the vane is facing into the wind. As long as the vane is upright, the rudder steers straight. If the vessel moves off course, in this case it bears away, the vane will catch wind from one side and this causes the vane to blow over. When the vane is forced over to the side, it turns the rudder, in this case performing a turn to port and our vessel is steered back on course. Once again, our vane faces the wind and the rudder steers straight. This rudder can only be effective if we have locked our main steering rudder. To successfully engage our self-steering, we must first balance and trim our sails. This is one of the most important steps and is a skill all sailors should strive for. The correct sail balance and trim can make the difference between a smooth or frustrating experience. To engage any system, we must first balance and trim our sails according to our desired course to steer. If we have successfully achieved this, we should be sailing with an easy or a light helm. If the helm is heavy and hard to steer, then the balance and trim is not correct. Once this is done, use the direction controller to turn the vane into the wind. This will require a bit of tweaking and practice at first, but gets easier over time. Once our vane is facing the wind, 
It will stay upright and the auxiliary rudder will be steering straight. It's now time to disengage our main rudder by lashing the wheel or tiller so that it does not affect our steering. Our vessel is now steered by the wind vane self steering system only. So what are the advantages of this particular system? As with all these systems, we do not need power to operate, so no electrical source is required. These systems are like having an extra crew member and gives you time for other tasks or much needed rest. If your main rudder fails, this system can also be used for steering. Without wind, the systems cannot operate and cannot keep you on a compass heading while motoring. The system needs to be sturdy and fitted correctly as it will be under immense strain. It will probably struggle to steer larger vessels. The next type is the servo pendulum system. This one connected to our main steering. Don't forget, once subscribed, hit the notification bell to receive alerts as new videos are released. The system is not that different from the first one we looked at. The first technical difference we notice is the size of the rudder in the water. This is not large enough to actually steer the vessel. The vane works the same and rotates the shaft which turns the rudder or the paddle in the water. This time however as the water pushes against the paddle, the water pressure forces it up and to the side. This creates a swinging or pendulum effect, hence the name. Now let's add a few more mechanics. First we can add some pulleys, then add some larger pulleys or flywheels, add a line that runs through all these guides and pulleys, which will be attached to our main steering such as the wheel or tiller. As the pendulum swings, it turns our steering which turns our main rudder. The vane turns the rudder which is forced sideways by water pressure. This swings and alters our main steering. Because we are steering with our designed rudder system, it makes for more effective steering. Due to this, we can steer larger vessels. The water pressure can be affected by other factors such as currents. It cannot be used as an auxiliary rudder in the event of main rudder failure. And more mechanics equal more repairs and maintenance. Our last system is also a servo pendulum system, but this time connected to our rudder. Basically it works the same as the previous servo pendulum system. This time however we can add some connectors. and then connect the pendulum to our main rudder. As the water forces the pendulum to the side, it pulls the rudder, which affects the steering.
The advantage to having this system is that there are less mechanics involved and can be checked easily. Unfortunately, the main rudder and keel can affect water movement over the pendulum. The main rudder would need to be an aft hung rudder and close to the transom. Because your main rudder is connected to everything, it might make setting tricky.